Welcome back to the sixth episode of the Head vs. Heart podcast. As always, I'm the heart, the bloke who feels footy, who loves it, and I'm with the head, the bloke who thinks footy, or so he claims. Anyway, let's get into accountability for this episode. Uh, straight away, I did better than you this week. How good is that? Yeah, I mean, you can't really claim much better because you guys did pretty awfully. Um, yeah. I don't care. I was in the negatives, but I've still beaten you, so that's a win in my books. Yeah, right. I'll give you I'll give you a win for this week then. Um, do you want to talk about uh, what your record for the week was, betting wise? Yeah, so I was zero from six, and I'm down fifty bucks. Yeah. Uh, could have been worse. Thankfully, uh, sports bet offers bonus bets for the first three games of the round. But um, the only one I was remotely close in was the Titans v Manly game. I got a little greedy in that one, but I had all try scorers, but Manly didn't win by thirteen points. Yeah, you said zero from six, zero from eight, actually. But, so, yeah, zero from eight. My apologies, even worse. Um, for myself, really good week. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I, went, I went one from six on the bets post on the pod, total loss of $557.14 uh, from those bets. My total loss for the week was 437.14, so not quite as bad because I was on uh, some other, other bets that won. So, Managed to mitigate my personal losses, but yeah, for the pod, not a great week. Uh, was losing everything until until the last game, and luckily pulled one back there. But let's uh, let's go through each game from from last round. Yeah, so first game of the round was Roosters v Storm. Uh, did you see the game ending up like that? Uh, so for myself, I saw it something close to that. I did say before the round uh, that I think the odds are pretty good, and the odds were even for both teams. So. I saw probably a close game. I, yeah, my error was that you know I leaned the Roosters in this game went Roosters one to twelve. Probably the play in this one would have been like an either team one to twelve or an either team one to ten, uh, considering the Roosters did play badly and the, the Storm played decently. Uh, I think it could have easily gone either way, but the the play would have been like an either team one to one to ten, one to twelve. What they said. Yeah, I I thought the Roosters would win somewhat comfortably i didn't see this outcome i think the roost is probably the most bipolar team of the the year so far they've lost badly against the bulldogs i mean the scoreline won't reflect reflect that but then they've absolutely dominated teams as well it's kind of really hard to get a read on yeah yeah definitely i agree with you uh there they have been a bit hit and miss considering they started off the year beating the yeah, broncos so exactly. very very hit and miss uh moving on to the next game the dragons warriors uh, what did you have in this this game? I believe I had the was thirteen plus. Uh, that didn't happen. I had a couple of try scores as well, including Ford and DWZ. Uh, what can you say other than sometimes it's good to love your footy? I guess um, even if your bet doesn't go your way, how good's a score like this? Completely unexpected. The Dragons at home show up, and Zach Lomax looks like the second coming of Jesus at this point. Uh, I'm frothing over him so much. Yeah, yeah, no, I uh, I had the Warriors minus five and a half, which is pretty pretty awful bet in this one, considering the final scoreline. Uh, the Dragons won by eighteen, so um, yeah, not really any excuses in that one. Uh, like, well, I mean, all I'll say is if you guess this one correctly, you don't understand footy. To be honest, there is no I mean, reason why the scoreline. In happen. reflection, like you could you could make an argument for the the Dragons before the game, but it's in Wind Stadium, which they they seem to be pretty good at, and. Uh, Mate, they lose more. It's lose stadium. It's not win stadium. It's lose stadium. Yeah, yeah. No, but 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 the dragons have been good this year, so maybe it's a it's time to sort of reevaluate where we think the dragons are at. Uh, and yeah, they might actually be a very good team that that push for the eight this year. So um, yeah, true. We'll, Definitely. We'll watch watch the dragons. The back of Zach Daddy, if possible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Next game again, an absolute shocker. No hammer involved, but the Dolphins beat the Eels sixteen to forty-four. Yeah, what does it say about the Eels that possibly the Dolphins' best four players in Hammer, um, uh, Flegler, Farnworth, and Gilbert all are out for this game, and they got pumped still. They got destroyed. Um, yeah, absolutely yeah, so... awful showing from from Parramatta, but some good. Good points from the Dolphins that you can sort of use moving forward in your sort of super coach and punting thinking. That Trey Filler looked looked really, really good. Um, so I, not as big of a loss as we may have thought at the fullback position there. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, other players played really well. 
the, the one we should probably speak about is is Jackie Bostock there. <laughs> I told you this would happen. I told you this would happen there. Yeah. The moment yeah. we dumped him, he's yeah. got to score a decent score. I, I didn't think it'd be this good, but yeah. of course he does the week we dropped him. Yeah, we both, we both traded him out. He goes mad. So it's pretty, pretty yeah. disappointing. But you know, you gotta take, you gotta take your losses. Um, yeah. And that'll happen. Speaking of, uh, that was the first side bet that went my way. How fun is that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely love that. Uh yeah. So one thing as well you should know is the fact the Dolphins scored forty points in a half. Do you think that's just the case of the? the I know it was really hot up there. They played in Darwin. But do you think that's something that should be factored in from now on with Eels fatigue? Like, do you think it's going to be something that's going to keep on happening? Or no, it's, do yeah, you think like they'd be able to rectify that to some extent? Yeah, I mean, 40 points and a half is, like, that's ridiculous in any situation, let alone uh, when, they're, when they're missing their four, close to their four best players. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know how much you can read into that. I think it, with the Eels, it's sort of you need a bit of a larger sample size than that game. But, yeah, pretty awful for them. What was your bet in this one again? Uh, so I had Eels head-to-head, Bostock, and I believe Gutho any time. Um, so, of course, Bost- Bostock scored. I told you he would score. Uh, and then Gutho, nowhere near. And there's some rumours as well that he may be nursing an injury right now. Yeah. But we'll go into that a bit later. Yeah, we'll go into that in that game. Um, yeah, and I always had the Eels line, which nowhere near. Another awful bet for... Uh, this round, uh, the next game was the Panthers Tigers. Another side bet in this game, which was uh, the Panthers thirteen plus. Uh, I'm going to jump on claiming a moral victory in this one. So my actual best bet was the Tigers plus fourteen and a half, which uh, only just lost because they lost by sixteen. Uh, where I'll claim my moral victory uh, was on a number of points in this game. Uh, right at the end of the game, Lockie Galvin was through on the try line decided to try and throw a flick pass back inside when he had the we had the trail line inside. I mean, obviously, it's not a guarantee that he scores, but just awful play from him there. Uh, there was a point where Aiden Caesar picked the ball off his feet and uh, Buller was on his inside. He could have thrown the pass to him, but the ref called up play earlier. And in a lot of those situations, they just let the play go on and uh, they didn't in this situation. It turned out he didn't actually knock on the ball. So they're a bit robbed in that instance. And then the most blatant of all was uh, Schneider ankle tapping Olam off the ball. Just complete blatant professional foul. Uh, and yeah, this sounds like excuses, mate. All excuses. All, all excuses. I think all reasonable excuses. And I think a good reason to sort of not count out the Tigers as much uh, moving forward. So at least the only silver lining would be that, you know, if you if you watch that game carefully, you don't actually completely count out the Tigers, even though they did lose uh, 13 plus in the end. But sorry, you know. Excuses from me, but yeah, you you talk through your bet in this one. Yeah, so first of all, for those keeping a track of our side bets at home, it is currently 3-3, and there is a very worrying chance of the head blowing a 3-1 lead, just like those Golden State Warriors, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, so I had in this one, I had Panthers 13+, plus. that is up. I then had Tango anytime try scorer as well as Tango and Taruba to combine for three plus tries. Uh, unfortunately, Tango didn't look like scoring, but Taruba scored two. Yeah, so if it's I was like cheering him on the whole time, never came. Yeah, yeah, that would have been a big win. But yeah, no, unfortunately, not in that one for yourself. Uh, the next game was the Titan Sea. It was pretty yeah. high scoring game, thirty to thirty four. In this game, what was yeah, your what saying? It's a good boy. Yeah, well, um, yes, yeah, so I had Manly 13 plus. I then had Tommy Turbo, Saab, and AKP to score. So I was cheering in the first 13 minutes when all three of them had scored, yeah. but then somehow the Titans put up a fight. I'm amazed that they did that. Are we are we underrating the Titans this year, even though I know I said that I think these guys get the spoon, but I'm not sure it really looks like that anymore. Yeah, no, I think they still do get the spoon just by the makeup of like how the other t- how many games the other teams have won. Just like I think it'll be difficult for them to not get the spoon just by yeah the amount of games other teams have won in this current position. But I think we are underrating the Titans. They've had a few really good performances recently and not come away with the win. Uh, so yes, I think generally we are underrating the Titans. Uh, but yes, yeah, st- still still looking for their first win. Uh, but but yeah, 
there may be something in the next couple of weeks that, that they do get over the line. Uh, anything else to add in regards to your bets in this one? Uh, no, not really. Uh, yeah. Other than, wow, I can't believe the Titans scored 30 points. Yeah. And I think it's like the 15th or 16th game in a row where they've conceded at least 20. I know the week prior where they conceded, I think, 20 points. Prior to that, they I think it was like nine games in a row where they scored conceded 28 or more. Yeah, so I think that, like, that statistic sounds right. So, yeah. Yeah, it just seems like the Titans just have an awful defense. And then I'm surprised Desi Hasler of all people hasn't picked that up. Yeah, yeah, you would think so. But I mean, I think their just team's just bad. It's difficult for Desi to to fix yeah. a team that's especially with the injuries they've had that that's yeah not going well. Um, yeah, fair enough. And then Broncos Raiders thirty four yeah. to ten. How do you think of this one? Yeah, another one that was. Pretty rough on the bet that I had. I had the Raiders plus eight and a half, I believe. I'll check that. Yeah, plus eight and a half, and pretty rough one. Uh, from watching this game, I obviously didn't watch the game live because we were out, but watching this game back, uh, Chevy Stewart just an absolute mare. Um, yeah, I feel bad. Hate to live, but but these yeah. things happen though. Yeah, I'm. I was similar to you. I thought the the Raiders would put up a bit more of a fight, so I'm kind of disappointed in that, but. Again, do the Raiders need this kind of a match to pull them back down to where they really belong? Yeah, maybe like a bit of a reality check for them. I think the Broncos, though, are a very consistent team that seem to defy the odds. Anytime I try and bet against them, and I think it's a really good spot to bet against them, they just some somehow find a way to defy the odds and put on a really good performance in games yeah. that they, they almost shouldn't win, especially like games where they're missing players like Reynolds. Reynolds, Haas. Madden came out and had a unreal game this yeah. game so yeah like pretty much flawless performance from the broncos and some big areas from the raiders there uh what so might have lost your bet in this one yeah so i had broncos head to head i had arthur's try square i don't know what's going on with him but he's he's not receiving enough ball and attacking space to be scoring week in week out which is kind of disappointing yeah um and then also had schiller and uh, Sheila she'll to score as well as Fogarty to kick six plus, or to score six plus points. Um, as we know, Fogarty went down and yeah. probably not coming back this year, or at least for most of the year. I think it's, yeah, I think it's like 12 weeks or 14 weeks or something like that, quite a while for yeah. them. Yeah. Um, I did see a tip actually on the Raiders' wooden spoon, but I think they've just got enough wins that even if they went, even if they won only like one or two more games the rest of the year, uh, I think they they missed the wooden spoon. So I think Newcastle are in a far worse position position than them, but we won't. We'll go into that later. Yeah, I mean, well, the next game is the Bulldogs Newcastle. Pretty yeah. depressing as as we're both Newcastle fans. Yeah, um, I, I I did have a long hard cry after this one, seeing our <laughs> seeing our man go down. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just makes me wonder why he was out there in the first place. I know they're two separate injuries, but he was clearly hurt from like the first or second tackle. Yeah, it really, it really makes me think. Surely that wasn't just that Liz Frank injury that's causing him so much pain. Well, yeah, I think what it was possibly because he was not um, completely favoring the other foot, and then it was the Liz, sorry, the other leg, and then the Liz yeah. Frank happened because he was running unevenly. So I think it was, even though it may have been the Liz Frank injury that put him out. I think it was because of the hit pointer that he ended up getting the Liz Frank injury because he wasn't running completely smooth. Yeah. And you can sort of see that if you're watching him from the jump, which, like you said, begs the question why he actually played it all. Uh, pretty frustrating as Knights fans. Uh, your bet in this one, you want to talk us through that one? Uh, yeah, Knights head-to-head, Marzu and Ponga. Um, yeah, just write, write a black line through all of that. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, it's hard to get a read on... Like this, whether that was a good bet or not, considering like Pong was injured the whole game, so pretty, pretty frustrating that game that one. But what can you do? Uh, last game of the round was the Sharks Cowboys. The doggies just wanted to win as well. I'll give them credit. We the doggies did look good actually. Yeah, the doggies did look good. Can't knock the doggies' performance. Um, the last game of the round, Sharks Cowboys. My first best bet win of the round. Uh, I had the Sharks. Over 22 and a half, and that got home, got home pretty comfortably. So, pretty happy with that one. Sort of the logic that I use in that one that the Cowboys concede a lot of points. Uh, and yeah, I like that, like the points line in that one made a lot of sense. But if you took the 
if you took their straight up line, the Sharks, that would have won easily as well. So uh, either way, if playing the Sharks either way would have been a good play in, in this game. What did you have? Yeah, so I had Sharks as well, as well as Mulatalo and Iro anytime. Um, obviously, Mulatalo scored. The Sharks won by 36 points. But I was just begging Mulatalo to pass it inwards like after his first try. I was like saying, please, Ronaldo, please, please, please throw it inside. Get me up. But no, it never happened. Yeah, yeah. And Iro is still, he looked really good. He had a good base. He looked base good, yeah. Points. Uh, so we'll talk, talk about him uh, when we get to that game, uh, later on the game. Uh, for this round, but yeah, he, he looks good even though he didn't get a try for yourself there. Um, All right, so, so it's time to talk super coach now, right? Well, uh, before we do that, we should probably talk uh, side bets. Well, side bets into super coach because yeah. well, scores now it's three to three, right? Correct. Uh, so our last bet side bet was who beats who head to head this week. So what did you get? Yeah, so my total score this week was 983, ranked around, I'm sorry, I am ranked around 22,000 now, down about 7K. Uh, so not a great score from myself. Had some had some poor scorers in there, like pretty consistently average scores in my team. What about yourself? Well, surprisingly, we, we have a very similar team now. You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I was very close. I, however, captain Ponga. And I would have won if Kalen Ponga scored, I believe, it was 55. I had 890, which means that somehow the Golden State Warriors did not blow a 3-1 lead. I am now down to 50,622 position. And I have to do a side bet. Sorry, not a side bet. I have to do my drink. And I have some foul stuff right here to look at. So, uh, you know what? If I'm drinking some foul stuff, I am going to have San Francisco in the background while I do it. <laughs> so I have, uh, where is it? This milk that expired yesterday, um, it says 22 April. Do you want to confirm the date right now? Yeah, no, I can I can see it there. It expired yesterday. Uh, and, and then I have, third, so, yeah. Yeah, then we have lime, where is it? Lime, dead man's fingers. I really hope this doesn't curl. So a little, a little whiskey and milk action as your. It's it's a rum and milk actually. Oh, rum and milk. Sorry, rum and milk action as your as your punishment. I'll let you. I won't go too harsh on you. So I'll let you decide how much of that uh, you're going to do. But I forgot I left this milk. milk out. It's been sitting out for like an hour as well. So if it's not curdled, <laughs> it's now. A nice warm rum and milk. Expired and rancid milk. milk. Yeah. Um. Yeah. While you're pouring that, we've got to uh come up with a discussion. Jump in the comments and discuss what our new side bet punishments should be. Uh, we'll we'll see how many we have this week. But so that that ends it for this round of side bets. But then moving forward, we'll we'll have some more side bets and more forfeits. We'll see what see what it'll be. Uh, moving forward. Ooh. Have you got that drink ready yet? I want to put this on camera and see what happens. Can you? Oh shit. Yeah, it's blurry. I mean, it, is it going to curdle? Yeah, I'm actually really worried it's going to curdle. Doesn't look like it. Have a sniff. Looks delicious. Got some. Is it curdling? It's like the consistency of like yogurt now. Delicious. All right, bottoms up. I don't want to. <laughs> Can I sip it? No, nah, just just send it. Actually, not that bad. I, I don't know how. They, like, neutralize each other. Finish it off. Finish it off. Delicious. <laughs> It'll be way worse than that. It's actually not too bad. You, you, you drink order next you time. You drink combo lime, rum, and milk. Treat, treat. It actually would not be too bad if there was some sugar in it. <laughs> like, I'm not even shitting you. That wasn't that bad. Yeah, right, right. I'll have to... Yeah. I have to think of a better punishment for next time when I beat you again. So Yeah, nothing sexual, please. We are not fucking each other. <laughs> um but yeah, no, so Super Great Training's down for both of us. Let's jump into our bets of the our best bets for the week. Um for myself, my best bet of the round is the Roosters one to twelve on bet three six five at three dollars twenty-five. Uh 
when this video comes out, you may be able to find it at better odds on points bet. So just have a look at points bet and bet set three, six, five. They're generally the best two platforms for that one. Uh, what about yourself? Yeah, I, I can now taste the rum milk. I feel like I feel really ill. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it's a sinker. It's come, <laughs> I've come to the bottom. It's not well. Yeah, yeah, that'll be that'll be bad tomorrow. You'll feel the effects tomorrow. Give me a bit of taste though. Yeah, so in the Manly v Eels game, I I have Manly thirteen plus sub and turbo anytime at a very reasonable five fifty. Yeah, nice. I feel like that's the sort of bet that you need to get back I to. I probably should heart. be making. Yeah, fair enough. Proper heart bet right there. Manly thirteen plus yeah. sub turbo, very heart bet. Roosters on twelve, I think, is hopefully a very head bet. Um we'll talk uh super great trades for this round for myself. I'm actually not making any trades. I ended up boosting for Gussie Crichton last week. Uh, so, yeah, trying to save some trades this week because I've only got one boost left. Uh, so I don't think I'll make any trades for this week because also there isn't any massively standout options that I'm looking at. Someone that you could look at is like a Cleary or if you have Ponga at fullback, you're probably trading out Ponga. Uh, and I already have Cleary and I've already, I never, I don't have Ponga at the moment. So, I don't really have too many problems that I need to fix, yeah. luckily. Uh, but what about yourself? Yeah, so I am a Ponga holder, but this week I'm keeping him in the team. I, I'll i tell you why in a bit after I turn to my trades for this week. Um, So I'm using two. I'm going Smithies to Olokowatu. I just want a bit more, you know, a bit more reliability in my second row forwards. Mm -hmm. Smithies seems to be, be a bit hit and miss, would you say? He's had a couple of decent scores, but I feel like he's not quite like maintaining those good scores. Yeah, like it's, it's definitely not a bad trade out. He's not, um, yeah, he's yeah. not going to get massive scores, so not a bad trade out. Yeah, and then because I had 860k left in the bank from last week, I have gone from Hutchinson, who is possibly the largest halfback of all time, to Nico Hines. Um. Yeah, so from there as well, what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to hold Ponga in my team until next week, um, and then I'll do two trades. I will trade from Brooks to Cleary, and then I will trade out Ponga to a rookie fullback, and we're pretty lucky at the moment. We've got some decent decent rookie fullbacks to look at so far, so yeah, so you're um, probably like a decent time for that. You're looking at like a Trey Fuller or like a uh, Chevy Stewart or someone like that. Trey Fuller, Chevy Stewart, and if he does all right, even possibly a David Armstrong who's debuting for the Knights this week. That's true. Or um, Jai Gray as well as another option there. Yeah, Jai Gray as well. Yeah, sorry. There's plenty of fullback options there. So I'm happy to wait and see. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, so yeah, that's the trades for, for this round. Let's jump into each game. Uh, the first game of the round is the Warriors versus the Titans. Uh, the Warriors off that very disappointing performance last week. A lot of people traded in players like your Tamari Martin, even a Sean Johnson or a Chance Nickel Clogstad. Um, and yeah, they were well, Chance Nickel Clogstad was decent, but reasonably disappointing scores. Uh, but just as a general rule of thumb, I think you should be holding and playing all of those assets, all of those Warriors assets, because the Titans are the, I think they're still the second highest. Uh, points conceded per game, maybe the highest now. It'd uh, be so... ridiculous not to. Like, they're conceding so many points game in, game out. I think the Warriors will bounce back very easily when it comes to super coach points. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a Tamari Martin. Do you have Tamari Martin? Yeah, I'm starting yeah. Tamari Martin this week. Um, I'm a Tamari Martin true through, if you will. I think he's going to kill it. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say, if you didn't rate Tamari Martin, I'd take a side bet on him to go over whatever yeah. amount of points. But no, uh, yeah, you're rating him as well. Um, let's talk CNK. He was still very good in a losing effort, so he could be someone that people should start to really consider, if, especially if you've got that Ponga. Would he be yeah, someone definitely. that you should consider trading in for Ponga? Well, you could make 150K, isn't CNK around 600, 600 something? I uh, don't know what he's at now, but yeah, he was around like a 650. Yeah, like I think it's a good idea to get him in. If you want to save some money and also have a decent option, I think CNK stocks are going to rise. Um, just as long as he doesn't have any more significant injuries, I think he's a good pick. He's not going to play Origin either, so definitely a good choice there for a probably not the starting fullback, but if you want a resi fullback, I'd probably go him. Yeah, I mean, he is 724k now, 
So maybe less of a trade in than he was last week. But if you traded him in last week, you'd be absolutely cheering, uh, considering they did play poorly and he's still got a good score. But yeah, he could still be a trade in this week. I'd be scared to be looking at trading him after this week because his price is going to be reasonably high. Uh, players, if players like your Roger Tulasa Shek, Tamari Martin, for this round, they're not players you have to think about for why. You just hold and uh, and hope they perform well, especially against the Titans. Like, don't think about trading them this round, uh, but we have to reevaluate after this round to see where they're at. Someone we should be putting some thought to is Sean Johnson, that it's come out that he has uh, an injury related to uh, like a workload management injury. So he might miss some gains during the season. Uh, and with Cleary back and SJ performing as well as he did, would he be someone that you're looking to trade out? Uh, yeah, look, week? if the rumours are true of him not kicking goals this week, then I'd probably looking to trade him out as soon as possible. How about you? Yeah, for myself, he has to be a hold this round because they're playing the Titans, but it's a, it's a, I'm going to be keenly watching him. If for some reason he isn't goal kicking or he looks like he's having his minutes managed, uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a big worry uh, in this game, especially it's really annoying as an SJ owner because like, you think he would go really well in this game. And if his minutes are managed, it'll be pretty frustrating, but, oh, but yeah. one to watch. Definitely. Uh, You'd hate game. to see him play 60 minutes there. That'd be, that'd be not fun. Yeah. Um, is there anyone else that sort of interests you in this game for me? No one. Not really. Um, okay. The only other person of note is David Fafita for me, who is still definitely a watch and see. Yeah. Um, I just want to see him consistently play good footy, but he's a guy I would like to bring into my team at some point. Yeah, I mean, the only thing with about Dave, about David Fafita, sorry, is that you're it's a watch and see, right? And then it, suddenly it'll creep up to round 13, and then he's not playing because he's playing Origin, and he's going to miss... 13, 16, 19. Yeah, exactly. Origin most likely. Yeah. And what, you're going to have him for a couple of rounds and he has a buy, and then he, another couple of rounds and he has a buy. It's like, well, he, he, sorry, he doesn't have a buy, he misses a game. It's going to be very frustrating to try and own a player like that anytime soon. For mine, really, if you're only, the only way you could be looking at him is, is sort of after Origin. Yeah, definitely. Uh, another player of note, uh, Ash Brimson, sorry, AJ Brimson, okay. now that he's finally back at fullback. I think Jaden Campbell's out for a couple more weeks. Could he be a decent pod player, do you think? Yeah, it depends what bias you're getting at, but yes, potentially. But another one, like you have to watch how the Titans are going. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's not super expensive. He's less than 600k. Uh, yeah, it's another one for me. It's just a watch. You can get him at center wing, which is nice. So maybe, maybe a pod play. But yeah, I don't mind watching him for this week at least because he's yeah, but that's only his first game at fullback last week. I don't mind watching him for another week and then sort of see how he goes. Yeah, no, definitely. Oh. Uh, so can... Bets in this game. I mean, the other person we can mention is Fermor, but for mine, just a whole... Or... I think he's... Yeah, if you don't have him now, it's too late, to be honest. I, I regret not getting on him, but it's too late. Find another player instead. Yeah, uh, let's talk bets. What do you have in this game? Yeah, so what I was trying to say earlier, by the way, is every time like I, I do like a quick little burp, I can taste expired milk come up. Mm-hmm. So if you see me like reaching off screen, I've got like a truly to try to neutralize all that like milk and, and nice. lime. Nice. Not well. Uh <laughs> yeah, so back on the footy. Uh I've got Waz 13 plus. I I think maybe last week was a bit of a fluke. I don't know. Um for both teams. I'm going Waz 13 plus, uh Dallin Wateni is Lesniak and Tamare Martin. Anytime try score is at eight dollars. Yeah, for myself in this game, I've got the Warriors 1 to 12. You can find that on points bet at $3.45. Why I like the Warriors 1 to 12. They performed poorly last week. I think they'll be very up for this game after their performance last week. But the Titans still look like a much better, much improved outfit. So I can't be taking the, the Warriors like a minus 11, minus 12 and a half, something crazy like that. There's no way I'm taking that line in this game. But I do think the Warriors win, right? So I think the logical way with all that information is to play the Warriors 1 to 12. You're going to get a bit better value than taking either of the lines. Uh, but I do think the Warriors find a way to win, but not not by a lot of points. So that's. I think that's the first side bet of the round. And I, I don't see a world where the Warriors don't win by more, more than 12 points. 
Yeah, okay. Well, I'm happy to take the Titans line in this one. Yep, so 12 and a half, or do you want to go 11 and a half? Uh, well, whatever it is, I'll, get, I'll, I'll put it in the... I'll put in the comments what, what we actually end up putting in the side bet, but I, I'm yeah. not sure what the line is at right now, but whatever it's at right now. <laughs> sure, as long as it doesn't blow out too much, I'm happy to take that. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'll do it like straight after we film. So yeah, no, it's easy. Yeah. Uh, next game is the Dragons v. Roosters. Um, so historically, oddly enough, the Dragons have done really well on Anzac Day games, and so have the Roosters as well, I think. So it could be, it could be a very interesting match, this one. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be a very, very interesting match. Both teams get really, really up for this game. I remember there was a game not that long ago where the Dragons pumped the Roosters in this game, but I think both teams will be super, super up for this game uh, and try to both, like they both, it's a pretty big rivalry and they both want to win this game pretty badly. Uh, talking super coach, though, probably the biggest talking point is, is Zachy Lomax still absolutely tearing it up. Well, Zach Daddy, I love him. Uh, yeah, he's one of my... One of my all-time favorite players. I'm glad he's finally coming good. Um, you can yeah. confirm I've been dick riding him for what the past five years. Yeah, I'll give you that one. You're a you're an OG Zach Lomax fan, so yeah. you liked him before it was cool. Think about um, it. Have any of my heroes never gone good? How many players can you name that haven't actually missed before? You've got Tim David, Daniel Sams, Zach Lomax, uh, Mitch Barnett to a lesser extent. Yeah. Um, who else is in there? A couple others. I forget all the dud ones, so Well, I don't I don't pick duds, do I? <laughs> no, but um Zach Lomax. So playing center again this week. People a lot of people speculating he was only gonna play one week at center, but playing center again this week, do you think it even matters? Because he's still I don't think it matters at all. As long as he keeps on scoring tries, it doesn't matter. Um yeah. he gives so much effort. He's like one of the few players in that Dragons team who will take those early hit ups, no matter where he is. And he He's competing so hard for that ball, like when it's being kicked. I don't think it matters at all because he's competing instead of the winger, no matter which side he's playing on. Yeah, yeah. No, I think you're right. It sort of speaks a lot. Like that try that he scored where he ran through, jumped up, took the ball uh, and scored, that sort of speaks a lot to how he's been playing. Uh, so, I, yeah, I definitely could still see him as an option. If you're looking for gun center wings, I think he's got to be in that, in that top four that you hold at the end of the season. Uh, so... Yeah, like uh, I don't see any issue by tra- like in trading him in at center. You know, I honestly it's... think if you can get Lomax, it doesn't really matter how much you pay for him at this point. Just get him in that team if you can. Yeah, I mean he's not gonna. I don't see him losing too much value, but if he does start to leak cash for for whatever reason, I I'm gonna be Hold looking it. at him very seriously to bring him in soon. Um, another player at that sort of same price point is is one of his opposition centers. It's Joey Marnie. Um, still mm-hmm. scored reasonably well in a poor effort from the Roosters last week. Would he be someone that you're looking at uh, yourself, even though he's at centre? I'm not interested in him at centre at all. I know he had that awesome game against us where he ran for like 350 metres, yeah, which is insane. Like he scored like 120 on Supercoach, something something fucked. Yeah. Um, I just don't think he's worth bringing in at centre because when it seems like when the Roosters don't do too well, he doesn't tend to score too well. He still Even scored though, a 68 on the weekend and they were bad. So Yeah, still, I mean, still decent, but I'm talking yeah. historically here. It's hard for any center to score if your team isn't doing well unless you score a try. For sure, for sure. Um, it does help when you're scoring more tries, but I think he still bases decently. And I, he's probably in my top four centers for the end of the year as well. For mine, I'm not bringing him in. That's because of specifically another player in this team. That man is the winger outside, and that's Dom Young. Condom. I'll explain, yeah, I'll explain exactly why that is. It doesn't have anything to do with how Dom Young will affect uh, Joey Mano. It's the fact that I want to bring Dom Young in in two weeks because he has that negative score in his break-even that will roll out of his break-even in two weeks. Obviously, it's a monitor. He could be awful, and you still don't want to trade him in, but it's a monitor because his price will be very low in two weeks' time. Uh, so... I'll bring him in. I don't want to own too many Roosters assets. I, feel I like to keep my team pretty diverse in, in the assets that I do own. Yeah, I'll, the sim- I'll actually speak about that one when we talk to the Raiders game, but I've got a bit, big problem with that coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, a lot of my players come from one team, which does not help. Yeah, yeah. And we can talk about how you would move off those type of players and yeah. how you should be thinking about that type of thing. But we'll, we'll get to that in the Raiders game. Uh, any thoughts on Dom Young or Joey Manu? 
Okay. Uh, look, I, I would like Dom Young back in my team, but he has screwed me once. Um, really, I'm worried if I bring him back, he'll screw me again. You know, just the, uh, you know, just, you know what they say, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, uh, fool me, can't get fooled again. Yeah, I feel the same sort of way about uh, Maxi Plath. I thought about reading yeah. him in last round, but I... <laughs> he's got a double. He screwed me. Yeah. He screwed me the, the, when I brought him in a couple of weeks ago, and then I'm like, nah, no way, I can trade him in, and then, of course, he scores a double, but... Of course, of course, that's how it always works. What can you do? That's that's super coach for you. Um, yeah. Get back to this game though. So Benny Hunt uh, is a player of interest. I think he's averaging one point nine try assists a game or something Funny. ridiculous like that. Are his base stats okay, or is are they just garbage for him to not to be flying under the radar? He's averaging sixty nine. He's averaging still decently. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, uh, he had one hundred and eighteen on the weekend as well. So would he yeah. be someone that you look at? I mean, I just wonder what his base stats are. If he's averaging 1.9 try assists, um, what's that? Seven, is it 10 points for that? 12 points for a try assist. 12 points, yeah. Um, so that means he's, what, getting, off the top of my head, about 20 super coach points per game. Well, actually, a bit more, but yeah. 22, whatever it is, um, yeah. super coach points. Is he really making enough tackles? Is he making enough runs to justify that if he has a bad game? Because that is, I mean, it's insane attacking stats, but... Still not, they're not base stats. Yeah, no, you're, I, yeah, you're right. But um, I don't think he's the worst option. The only problem is he plays at halfback and there's better options in my opinion. And we'll talk about some of those better options in the later games. Uh, was there anyone else yeah, of interest for you in these teams? Uh, no one else can really think of. Yeah, um, I mean, the only one, maybe Gussie Crichton. I yeah, mean, Tommy Eisenhuth is a bloke I've had for a while. I'm considering exiting him soon, but he's he's doing decently enough where I can't justify getting him out for anyone else at the moment. Like, he's yeah. consistently scoring 50s. So it's not too bad. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, Eisenhuth, I don't know much to say. I would trade him out soon. But um, yeah. Gussie Crichton, a lot popular trade him last round. Probably at the price point, not looking to trade him in this round, if, but I'm still pretty happy that I have him because I think he will pick up from like you pick up his average from last week's performance, and it's it's only time like it, it won't take long before he starts getting some attacking stats. So still happy with him. Yeah, there. definitely. But uh, let's yeah. Talk um, about... speak... Sorry, I was going to say what what do you what are your thoughts on Terrell May? What do you think is going on there? Yeah, he like, just his minutes, his minutes are... are all over the place. Yeah, it's it's frustrating as an owner, but I don't really think you can do much with him. I think you have to just hold him. And uh, do you do you start him? Do you bench him? Do you play, play, play him as your resi? What do you do? You play. He's you play still him. averaging, even though he has those bad, like he has those low minutes games. He's still averaging fifty-seven. Like you have to play him, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I mean, but like I don't get it. I, I mean, this week surely I don't get minutes because we didn't get minutes last week. That seems how it goes. Jumps from one to the other, but yeah, no. just doesn't Some make annoying. Sense. But what can you do? Let's talk betting. Yeah. Uh, um. So for this game, I I think the Dragons might actually hold on here. Well, not win, but I think they make it a close enough game. I think Lomax will end up scoring ten plus points. Um, Walker, assuming he kicks, will get six plus. Then I've got Young and Lomax anytime try scorers, as well as Dragons at ten and a half line. At twelve fifty. Yeah, nice. So for myself, I think the only way to play this is the Roosters because of the performances last week. Roosters lost Dragons one. General betting logic. Uh take a good team off the loss. Uh, and you don't want to bet on a team that's just one because the market won't miss them. Yeah, yeah. but are the Roosters a good team though. That's the thing. I think they are. I think they've had some some tough games, and I think they are when they have players back, which they do this round. They have Dom Young, who's a big asset, big big loss for the Knights. So, uh, and then Sammy Walker back there as well. Uh, I think their team's a lot better this week than it has been previous weeks, and they'll definitely be up for this one. In saying that, I'm playing the Roosters one to twelve because I think the as I've mentioned, I think both teams are going to be up for this game. So I think the Dragons will be very up for this one, but I think the Roosters team is slightly better with the ins that they have. So I'll take the I'll happily take the Roosters one to twelve. You can get that at three dollars twenty five on bet three six five, which I've already mentioned as my best bet for the round. Not bad, not bad. Good to see we're on the same page for that one. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very similar thoughts in that one. Uh, Storm Rabbitohs is the next game. Uh, from a super coach point of view, there's a heap of those Storm players that people will will own the popular spine members, your Pappenhausen's Munster Hughes Grant. Um, the first one I want to talk about is Pappenhausen. He's been a little bit quiet. Do you what do you see that uh, as yeah. meaning? I, I just think he's a hold. Like I don't really see any real better options than him to really justify bringing them in. Yeah. I just he's doing well enough where he's what averaging somewhere between fifty and sixty every game. Yeah. But he tends to have like a couple of good games, but he's not really scoring lower than say fifty. Yeah. Um I just don't see any way if you have him, how could you justify getting him out? Like who is the better player than that consistently week in, week out? Yeah, I mean, you can make arguments for like a Reese Walsh or if you want consistency, someone like a Chance. But for mine, he's just a whole, he's not playing so badly that he's worth a trade out. And I feel like he could pop off, especially in a game like this against the uh, against the team that's conceding the most points in the competition per game, which is the Rabbitohs. Yeah. So definitely a hold, definitely a hold for all of your Storm assets and possibly a buy for some of them. So your. Harry Grant at a price of, or a discounted price, I'll double check his exact price now. Is it 658? It's not a massive Ooh. discount yet, but uh, I will, he's got to be someone that you start to consider. If he has a few more low scores, his price gets down there. You've got to start considering a Harry Grant. Would he be someone that you consider? Yeah, look, to me, I think I'm going to consider him the moment that I will probably bring him in the team the moment that. Uh, a certain Lusick who plays for the Eels um, of unknown name um, ends up getting dropped by hands, which is which is, is an, it's an uh, it's an eventuality at this point, right? So if I can get him in for maybe at most a loss of about 150k for Grant, then I am more than happy to do that. Yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense. Um, we could talk storm back rowers, but I think you've kind of missed the boat on those. Players, Bloor, you could still get, but don't love it. Like, mm. rather save a trade than bring him in. Depending on, obviously, depending if you have big problems in your second row. But for mine, any of these sort of storm back rowers, I'd rather save a trade than bring him in. Yeah, definitely. Moment. If you have Joe Chan, though, uh, is he a hold at the moment, even though he's playing off the bench? Yeah, still negative break even. So, still a hold. Uh, don't do anything with Joe Chan, but don't play him either, obviously, because he's off the bench. It's not. Yeah. Uh, not getting enough minutes to sort of justify playing him. Should have better options by this point. Uh, let's talk some of these Rabbitohs players. Uh, their fullback that we already mentioned before, Jai Gray. Uh, if he gets enough game time, there's talk. Well, there's not really talk within the Rabbitohs camp, but maybe as an option if Latrell comes back to play centre. What do you think of that? Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind him if we know that Latrell is going to come back and play centre. Again, yeah. I, I would love a cheapy fullback. I think there's currently two. If there was made to be three, then I would be absolutely nutting myself, to be honest, with having all those options. But what can you do? So there's four, right? Oh, four, actually, yeah. Four, yeah. including... Uh... But the problem is, how long does Latrell have for? It's another no, week? Not that another, long. another week or another two weeks? No, the... Or is no, he back next week? Way, I don't know. It's not that long. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely a wait and see. He's not someone you'd bring in your team right now. But as a sense as confirmation, Latrell, if he's not going to play fullback, which there's some big rumours that may be the case, then he's definitely a buy for me. Yeah, I like him. As a player, Jai Gray, I really like him. But uh, I don't know if he's necessarily a buy because I think he's fullback only. Whereas some of these other options are centre wing, like your Armstrong, for example, is centre wing fullback dual. But... He could strong arm his way into my team, is what you're saying. Oh, no, sorry. Jai Gray's 5'8". I don't know why I, was back, why I thought he was oh, back. He's 5'8". Okay, um, in that case, yeah, probably not, just given that I I think there's better options at 5'8". At the moment, but, you know, we could, yeah, tomorrow true. month, we could make a bit of money and want to trade yeah. off him next week, for example. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, he's, he's a watch either way. Apart from that, are there any Rabbitohs assets that you're really looking at from mine? Well, no. Did you see who the number who's playing wing for the Rabbitohs? Number two. Yeah, guy's back. How funny is that? He's finally going to play. Do you think anyone's held him this whole time? I mean, some people would have held him because yeah. they just didn't have an option to trade him too. But yeah, like, he held him in cheering. Like he make a little bit of money now, but like I don't know. I'm not trading him in. Don't. I wouldn't be thinking about trading him in. Oh no, definitely don't. But it's really funny that he's finally playing again in round eight. 
plays one and two, everyone thinks they've found the new, newest cheapie. It's going to go to 500k. Now it gets dropped for five games. Yeah. Uh, let's talk bets in this one. What did you have? Uh, so I think the Storm will run away with this. They've been pretty poor over the past couple of weeks. I think the Storm finally show up and they beat the Rabbitohs by 30 points. So I am going Storm at negative 29 and a half with Katoa, uh, Pappenhausen and Hughes. Anytime try score is at $41.50. Yeah, so big bet for yourself there. Myself, I've gone a bit more conservative than that one. Uh, I've won the Storm 1-12 to 12, uh, on points bet at $3.56. Why I like the 1-12. to 12. The Rabbitohs are off a buy, so they'll be well rested. The Rabbitohs need to get up for a game. Uh, and I think hopefully they get up for this game. It's a it's an Anzac Day clash, so hopefully they they do get up for this one. Uh, and Storm have pretty consistently been scraping home against every team. They've got they've had only think I think one to twelve wins so far this year, uh, and I sort of see that trend continuing with the with the Rabbitohs off the bye. But you know the Rabbitohs have been poor, so um, yeah, like it's it's not out of the realm of the possibility your bet, but. I like the Storm 1-12 to in this one. I just think my bet's getting up, to be honest. I think I'm finally due for a biggie, so yep. I think it's getting up. Getting a big one? Yeah. Um, Catch a large tuna. Yeah, that's it. The Seagulls eels game is next up. Uh, a bit doing in this game. We'll talk to Seagulls team first because the Eels team is, yeah, I mean, like, it's just awful last week, but we'll talk We'll talk to Seagulls. Their fullback, Tom Trojevic, was, uh, I mean, a very popular captain choice last week. And deservedly so as well. He ended up yeah, getting like He didn't go as well as like maybe people would have thought. He ended up on 86, which just made him a bit disappointing. Sort of like really, really early on and set up another couple as well. Yeah. Uh, so a bit disappointing, Tommy T there, but uh, just another hole for mine. I don't think yeah, it's definitely a hole. If you have your. Yeah, I'm not sure if I should be aiming for him, but again, yeah. do you think do you think it's worth getting him in now, or do you think it's just other options? Yeah, I, I think he plays Origin, and I think there's better options. So, n- not for mine, but like he's another one yeah, similar. Well, he's better than Pappenhausen, but in a similar yeah. boat of Pappenhausen, as I just want to hold both of them. So, yeah, just just a hold for mine. Uh, we can talk about other players. There's a lot of holds in this team. Luke Brooks yeah. is probably not one of them though. I think it's a sell now, do you? I, yeah. I'm planning on selling him next round, but it's really disappointing with him because we saw two big scores out of him. We thought that Luke Brooks had finally been unleashed, then he just went back into his shell. And he's had these basic, basic games. Yeah. He's not doing anything. He's just kind of standing around, just being boring, really. Yeah, and that was the game last week where you were sort of buying him for him to go big last week, and he, he still did. Just didn't, so. Yeah, I just don't think he's worth keeping at this point. Yeah, definite sell for mine. I can't see much more upside in him. Uh, there's a few other players like Corey would help that we're interested in, but he didn't have a massive one on the weekend. Ola Kawatu, yeah, obviously still a strong option, but I think he plays Origin, so it's a monitor for Ola Kawatu. I'm not looking to trade him in right now. Uh, I'm like, I traded him in this week, but we think okay. differently us too. Yeah, so what's your what's your thoughts on the trade-in there with Ola Kowatu? Well, I trade him in for smoothies. I just wanted someone who, like my Paddy Carrigan, is scoring consistently high. I just wanted someone else in that team to kind of anchor, anchor up top. I know he's not going to score 100, but I know he's going to score 75 week in, week out. For mine, I would tend to disagree with that take because he is definitely a player that can have a lot higher upside. He can score tries, whereas Paddy Carrigan has scored what, one, two tries in his entire career? I believe so he scored two tries back-to-back, like in two different yeah. games. Yeah, yeah. So he's going to be a consistent score every week because he just doesn't score tries, whereas yeah. Ola Kawadi does score tries. Did he have, what, two on the weekend? Or one, at least yeah. one? Yeah, he's good one. Doesn't matter. Yeah, 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 doesn't matter. But anyway, he, there could easily be games where he, he goes for a double and he does go above 100. So I don't think you should be bringing him in if you're looking for the same sort of consistent option, but I do think you should be bringing him in generally. Yeah, his base stats are insane, so I'm happy either way. But Yeah, yeah, but like he has a high upside, so I think he's a, a good, like one of your players you should be targeting your best team for the end of the season, but just be wary because I think he probably plays Origin, uh, so just be wary if you're building a team 
uh, but you might have too many origin players. So just something to think about there. But yeah, I, I still do like him as a player. Yeah, definitely. Um, talking the uh, Eels team now, uh, first player we should probably touch on is their fullback, Clint Gutherson. Had fluid drained from his knee on the weekend. Um, do you know anything further about that one? Look, all I really know is what I heard on the NRL Physio. Um, shout out to the Magic Sponge, Sponge podcast, far better than ours. Um, and they're also doing fun. I think they're beating us by a lot in Supercoach, funnily enough, as well. Um, we won't speak about that. But still early, still early. I'm back on. Still... Yeah, so from my understanding, apparently he's got some issues with his knee cartilage, which much like um, Tamalolo may lead to him not just basically being hampered by it for the rest of his career at this point. Yeah. I mean, Gutho's pretty young. He's only 28, I think. So hopefully it doesn't cut his career out by too much. Actually, how old is he? I didn't think he was... I don't know. Yeah, he's not He's not that old. He's like 29, I think. But... Uh, 29, yeah, you're right. Turning 30 this year. But yeah, hopefully we don't... Hopefully we've got a Gutho for a couple more years. Yeah, um, yeah so definitely don't expect peak Gutho to be back anytime soon. But yeah. those are the words that you end up eating pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. No, so for my, it has big implications on their team. I think he's massive for them. It has big implications betting-wise and big implications super coach-wise. I would be wary if I was even a Dylan Brown owner. I think it's it can definitely affect the rest of the scoring output of their attacking players. So I would be super wary um, of, of him there. I'm not really looking at trading in any, uh, any Eels options. You don't really need to trade out eels options anytime soon uh lane is another one to just to hold yeah, and watch. Hold. But yeah he's the bloke that we would have to yeah. end up kind of biting me in the bum by not playing him but yeah um again what can you do in those circumstances yeah yeah dylan brown though probably a trade out uh would he be a yeah. trade out for yourself for the moment uh yeah i traded him out a couple of rounds ago and i'm happy i did I, I just don't think Dill Bags is really doing that well. He's been shifted around a little bit. He's been given different halves, pairings. Um, he's been told to play dominant. He's been played, played, told to play non-dominant. His game's just not consistent because of it, and he's yeah. just not scoring well. Yeah, yeah. But maybe someone we can look at uh, in the future, another sort of player that you target around that, maybe round 12 even, uh, if he's at a really low price, because I think he does play round 13. So someone to target going into round 13 possibly, but I would definitely be looking at selling him for now. Definitely. Yeah, the other player of interest is that Ethan Sanders in the 5'8 position. Uh, another one to just watch because this is his first game. So we'll see how he goes and maybe possibly a trade him. But... I don't. I personally don't see him playing again. Um, as it turns out, Ethan Sanders signed to the Raiders this week. What so he, it's for next season, but I do not uh, see the Eels playing him unless they really need to. I don't think they'll... Like they they do need to, so I don't think they'll care that he's going to the Raiders. They just will is it, play. Is it Moses back care. next week? Sorry, is it when's Moses back? No, no, I don't think it's next week. I think, or maybe, well, maybe it is. I don't know, but yeah, like, I, I, I just don't think he gets three games because I don't see Moses or Brown sitting out for Origin. So yeah, I think there's other options in front of him, and just given the fact they know he's leaving to the Raiders next year, I I don't see him getting developed. Yeah, yeah. Either way, not one to worry about for this round. Let's talk betting. Uh, what did you have in this game? Yep. Yeah, so I think Manly uh, go back to their form. They will score a lot of points, and I think their defense is going to be better. Personally, I think the Titans' attack is better than the Eels at the moment, which is kind of crazy to say. Yeah. Um, so I'm going Manly 13 plus with Saab and Turbo anytime try scorer at 550. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. Very hot bet. Uh, as as sort of already discussed, that's your best bet of the round. For myself, no bets in this game. I'll quickly explain why. If I was going to play this game, it would have to be the Eels because they're off that massive loss. Public perception is going to shift so far against them. So you have to think about playing the Eels in this game, which is what I did. But there's a few reasons why I don't like the Eels. Gutherson injury, like who knows what that that produces. And Sanders, who knows what he produces in the halves there. Although I have heard some good things about him. Uh, I'd, I'd rather just stay away from the game with so many uncertainties. In that in that Eels team there. Can I wait? Speaking of, can we start calling him uh, the Colonel from now on? How's that Colonel sound? Sanders. Yeah. yeah, Colonel Sanders, surely. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we can start that one. We can claim. Cheeky, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll uh, we're claiming that one. Yeah, 
Uh, the Tigers Broncos game Saturday five thirty game at Campbelltown. Who is um, Campbelltown? Is it very yeah, it is at Campbelltown. Right yeah, yeah. This should be a should should be a good game. The Tigers, I think, hopefully will be up for this game. Uh, playing in Campbelltown. The but they are still the Tigers, so I'm not really sure about that one. But yeah, so I'll explain well, when we get into betting. I'll explain yeah. what I, how I feel about the Tigers at the moment. But um, yeah. Talking teams, massive ins for the Broncos in Reynolds and Haas, but outs of Mam and Cobo, and then Junior Tupo out for the for the Tigers. So Tigers team doesn't change too much, but some big, uh, interesting sort of changes to the to the Broncos team. Um, yeah, definitely. You've, you've lost uh, two big attacking priorities in your team, but you've also gained one back. Do you think that? Would you rather have an, a Reynolds or a man playing this game? What do you think? I'd rather have Reynolds playing every game. I think Reynolds is way, 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 not even close more important for this team than man. I think man is one of the more overrated players in the game, and I think Reynolds is one of the more underrated players in the game. So I think Reynolds... I think is everyone a... rates Reynolds pretty perfectly, to be honest. We all know he's a really good player, but... Okay, I would rate him as, like, very close to one of the best halfbacks in the game, so... Okay, no, it's a bit overrated. That, I think you're overrating it now. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. You, uh, that's why I say you, I think he's underrated. Um, okay. But, um, yeah, so I think Reynolds in is massive for them. And I think man out, while he does offer a lot in sort of running the ball and stuff, I don't think he's as big an, of an out as some people may estimate in this game. Um, let's talk super coach in terms of players that are relevant. Lockie Galvin uh, for the for the Tigers had an average score. but. Quiet game. I mean, players are going to have a quiet game, especially when they lose. So, well, in the past position, are they really making so many points? Like, they're normally one of the quieter positions, aren't they? Yeah, no, it's important to remember who's playing the Panthers. And then this week, if you have yeah. another poor score, it's important to remember who's playing the Broncos, right? Definitely, yeah. After this week, I'm, I'm not sure his exact pictures after this week, but after this week, I'm going to start playing him again, probably, if he's if he's got some more right fixtures. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I think we have similar th- thoughts on Galvin. Holt, you're just holding, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm a hold. I, I might play him this week just to try and change it up a little bit. But um, if I do play him, he'll be a resi for me. Yeah. Um, I, I I don't think he does too well, but I'm kind of thinking we might be surprised. Yeah, yeah. Um, Steph Otokamanu is a player of interest. He's been averaging sixty or something like that. Something really decent good. value there. Yeah. I think he's a bit too expensive though for my tastes. Six. Yeah. Six hundred k averaging sixty point three. And he had a what did he have on the weekend? He had a thirty nine on the weekend, so that'll turn a lot of people off him. I was already not super keen on him. Just playing for the Tigers, it, it's hard to sort of get a read on that player. And if I'm going to pick a player at that same price, but I'd rather pick a player with the runs on the board, like an Adam Field, yeah. like a Payne Haas, pay like one hundred twenty, hundred fifty k more for a Payne Haas, or you pay like sixty, seventy k more for a. For an Adam for, for Neil Blake, I'd take that every day of the uh, week. Paddy Harrigan, if you would. Sorry? A Paddy Harrigan. I would not take a Paddy Harrigan, but yeah, the other two players that I mentioned, more likely to jump on on those Ooh. players. Um, players still in this team, like an Happy Corus, are still a hold. Uh, Sammy Fine had moved to the back, starting on the back row. Does that interest you that he's starting on the back row now? Um, a little bit, but is he going to get more minutes when he's starting compared to being off, off the bench, do you think? Is that going to be a long-term thing? Um, yeah, with Ford in general, I mean, with Ford in general now, it's not really a guaranteed thing that you're getting minutes just because you're starting. Like, uh, for example, uh, Tommy Hazelton played 25 minutes for the Sharks last week. He started. Yeah, Tom, no, no injuries. Yeah, but Tommy Hazelton's a front row, and they're more likely to rotate front rowers than back rowers. So I think he still will get decent minutes. And it's because Bateman switched roles to that 13 now. It'll be an interesting watch. I'm not trading in this week, but I think it'll be a very interesting watch to sort of see how many minutes he gets and see if this is the role that he sort of sticks with. But he could, could have a very good game this week. So, yeah. Watch yeah, look, watch. all I'm saying is I just want to see him play minutes before I commit to him. Yep, yep. Fair enough. Uh, in terms of the Broncos team, I think the most popular trade in this week is Reese Walsh. Uh, people, super coach players tend to have a very short memory because 
everyone in the world last week was saying how bad he was because he got a 30 something and then he turns around and gets 110 the week after. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the sort of player you have to, you can't be as high as, on him as he was last week and you can't be as low on him as he was yeah, no, definitely. with the 32 or whatever he got. Uh, he is a good player, or 38, sorry, he got. Um, he's a good player. I don't hate him as a trade-in, but just be just be aware of what you're trading in for, right? Like, he can have the occasional low score, and he's all attacking. He relies pretty much 100% on attacking stats. So just be aware of that. Just be wary that he's playing, well, he might be playing Origin, depending on Pong is on. He will be playing Origin because Pong will play. Yeah, Pong is, Pong is not playing. He's yeah, still yeah. going to play Origin. Yeah, um, yeah, the one thing I'm still kind of worried about with uh, Walsh is that he's playing this week against a rather big pack. Um, the Tigers boys are very large. I don't mean I know Dave Clem is like six five. Um, you've got Stefano in there as well. Um, I just I'm still kind of concerned about his psychological impact of the broken cheekbone. Again, as we've found out in the past, people with facial injuries tend to just not engage the line as much as they used to. While the Broncos didn't up still they steamrolling the the smaller Raiders pack, I still kind of have some hesitance to see him do that against a larger pack. But again, only time will tell at this point. I wouldn't be worried at all for Reese Walsh's stocks with the pack size that he's coming up against. A lot of his plays come from wrapping around the outside, throwing these crazy cutout balls, or um, yeah, scoring in in those sort of wrap plays. So not not a worry for mine that concern there. The facial fracture, I guess you could say that's a concern, but he went scored 110 on the weekend, so I don't know how much that is really bothering him. Look, I just think it's all psychological, so I'm more than happy to be disproven, but I just don't think he'll have that great a game against uh, the Tigers. Yeah, I mean, I can see him easily going big again, but... I'm yeah. happy to take a side bet if you want. Yeah, uh, what's, his, what's his average... Take, I mean, he's priced at a sixty-two, but it will take. I'll take seventy. Sure, I'll take under seventy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So another side bet. So I'll, I'll say Reese Walsh goes over seventy, and you can say uh, under seventy in this game. Um, I guess, yeah. I mean, there's notable players like Reynolds and Haas in this game, but they're not super, super, super coach relevant at this point. You could trade in Haas. But I don't mind yeah. just giving him, giving him some time. I think Haas' break even is super high at the moment. He's a guy I'd like to bring in, but yeah. not for his current price, knowing his break even, I think, is almost yeah. six, uh, almost three figures. But yeah. we'll, we'll yeah. wait and see. Uh, and it's more just like we don't know what, what he's going to be like coming back. From exactly. What like. kind of minutes is getting back coming from that, but coming back from that injury. Yeah. Um, obviously, Robert Arn's now over, so he's not too worried about that. But again, how many minutes is he going to play? He's going to play 80. We don't know yet. Yeah, no, exactly. That's that's uh, that's right there. But um, let's talk betting because I don't think they're too super coach relevant. So what did you have in this game? Look, I think the Broncos win pretty comfortably. So I'm going Broncos 13 plus, um, as well as Jesse Arthur's going over for $4. Yeah, for myself uh, in this. So that's a bit of a safer bet for yourself. but Indeed, very safe. Uh, very, very safe. For myself in this game... Um, I, yeah, so I've already mentioned how important I think the players that are coming in are for the Broncos. So I think that Adam Reynolds is a massive in. I think a Payne Haas is a massive in, given their forward rotation at this point. Uh, and I don't think Ezra Ram is, is as big of an out, especially of how well Jock Madden played last week. Uh, but in saying that, I think, as I've already mentioned, the Tigers were a bit robbed last week. So I do expect them to be very up for this game, especially in Campbelltown. If there was going to be a way that I played it, it would have to be the Tigers line with yeah. all that being said. But because of the ins in the Broncos, uh, I think their attack could be really fit and firing. So very scared to play either way in this game. So just leaving this game alone. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if there was maybe a Reynolds not playing, I'd be very, very keen on the Tigers. But yeah, no, just leaving the game alone at this point. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, before we go to this next game, just give me a moment. Just yeah, check out. I mean, I'll, I'll just quickly talk about uh, this next game. So it's Cowboys versus Panthers, the next game. Um, I'll just quickly talk to, because the Cowboys have had uh, a few players missing. So, um, yeah, they've had 
sorry, not a few players. We think they've had a few. What? <laughs> they've had a few. Uh, uh, they've had a few poor sort of scores. The Cowboys recently, so um, it sort of affected the scoring of some of their star players, like your Scotty Drinks, your Valentine Holmes. But after this game, they have really, really strong fixtures. So while you might be worried about uh, Cowboys players in this game, you should be looking at uh, trading them in for the, the week after this one. So just watch your Cowboys players and uh, be looking at trading in like your Val Holmes players like that for next round. So get Val Holmes in your planning if you don't have him for next round. Yeah, definitely. I don't think there's too much more to mention about Cowboys players. They've just been average because they've had tough fixtures. Once they get good fixtures, they'll be better. So, um, Yeah, definitely. Um, the only real player of note for me, again, is Tom Chester. I think once he gets some attacking stats, he may be a genuine option. But for now, probably just wait and see. Agree? Yeah. Disagree? Yeah. Um, oh, I mean, I'm, I'm just not even really thinking about Tom Chester. So, yeah, like <laughs> watch and see. But, yeah. No, fair enough, fair enough. Nothing for this um, one. Let's talk Panthers players. Dylan Edwards has been pretty consistently still killing. He's been really good so far, but he yeah. seems to there seems to be a bunch of players that are scoring a bit more than him. Um, but they can score more than him, but Edwards is consistently outscoring them, if that makes sense. Yeah, so Dylan Edwards is currently the second highest averaging player in the game behind Ronaldo. Um so it depends what you want in your team, right? You can get a consistent 90 average every week or you can have these players like your Reese Walsh that one week goes 120 and one week goes 40. For mine, this week the trading is Reese Walsh out of those two because he's like 200k less and he'll by the end of the season average close to the same even though he'll have really high weeks and really and lower weeks. It, it has to be Reese Walsh at this point in time. Dylan Edwards is also someone that may play origin uh, so that's a slight concern, but if you, it depends on what type of super coach player you are, really. But if you're more conservative, yeah, you can go Dylan Edwards. If you're more, um, yeah, if you're more of an outgoing player, you can go, or more risky player, you can go. Going player. Yeah, I don't know why I said outgoing. I'm a <laughs> risky player. You go, a, you go, Reese Walsh. Um, big inclusions for the Panthers: Taylor May and Nathan Cleary, both back in the team. Yeah, think? I'm surprised to see Yam back in, to be honest. I thought they'd give him more than a week off for what he did, but... I don't know. It was a weird one as well because they said he was just... He just withdrew for personal issues. They didn't actually say that he was... It was any sort of, yeah. like, punishment. It's really so odd. It's really so, bad. you know, he wasn't even driving at the time. So, basically, yeah. his mate is driving a rental car and he yeah. does 94 kilometres an hour through a school zone and he films it. Yeah, yeah. Pretty dumb, but he's back in. I'm going to be playing this week because uh, I... The Cowboys can see heaps of points. So hopefully some attacking stats. Hopefully they go down the left. They just haven't been. But hopefully you get, he runs the ball a bit and maybe jags a try. But um, yeah, maybe playing this week myself. What about yourself? Uh, you got... I, I don't have Talon May. I don't really have any interest in him either. If yeah. I was to get a Penrith outside back, I would either choose Taruba or Tungo. Yeah. But um, at this stage, I don't really have the drive to get either. Yeah, so... You should be looking at them because they're going to play round 13. For mine, it's May because he is as cheap as he is. He would be the player to trading. Maybe not this round. Wait and see how he goes. Wait and see if he, they go that way with the ball at all. Obviously, all the ball's going to be going to Tungo, but, you know, Tungo could play Origin. Uh, so there's some 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 worries there. But, you know, May, he's about 400K. Not Could, could be an all right trade in if you get some yeah. ball. Yeah, look, from what I see, Penrith tend to play down the right edge. I just don't think he's getting enough ball on the left edge. Um, maybe that will change with this sick new tat. I don't know. But um, also speaking of, the other rumor why he withdrew was that they suggested his tattoo didn't heal properly and they were worried it may hurt too much playing footy. Yeah, very good yeah. reasons. But, um, don't know which one's funnier, but they're, they're both good. Yeah. Um, Speaking of trade-ins, though, Nathan Cleary, the second most traded-in player this week, uh, and probably for good reason. He had a 121 his last score before being injured. You did say you're going Hines, though. Is there a reason Hines over Cleary? 
Um, we will speak about that later, but a certain player being excluded from that Sharks team makes me feel like all the attack will go through Nico. Fair enough. That does make sense. I held Cleary. I'm gonna say I was gonna say luckily, but I guess unluckily because he ended up being out for longer than expected. But I'm happy that I have him now. I guess the ideal partnership would be Hines and Cleary. I think Hines has gotten very lucky with some of these scores. He keeps running into these teams that are missing players. Talk about Hines later, but yeah, just in the Hines Cleary debate, he keeps getting lucky in the teams that he runs into. Like he's been playing a Raiders team this week without possibly their best player in Fogarty in, in terms of impact on the team, um, which is, yeah, probably a big call, but in terms of impact on the team, maybe their best player in Fogarty. Um, so, yeah, like Heinz is a good shout this week. Very also a good shout this week. Um, yeah, that's probably most of the, the options in this game. Panthers options start to become more viable from now on with... Uh, with all the players back, and I think it helps their attacking stats, which sort of speaks to both of our bets in this one. Do you want to talk to your bet first? Yep. So I think the Panthers win comfortably. I'm going at Panthers at a line of negative 19 and a half. And then I am going uh, a Taruba double and Taruba and Pungo to combine for three tries at 1075. They're killing it down that right edge. And I think that the Cowboys' left edge will not do well against these guys. I think they're just going to steamroll them. Yeah, so if, for myself, not a little bit similar, and I'm taking the Panthers at a minus line. I got the Panthers minus seven and a half on tab at a dollar ninety-five. That probably still would take the minus the minus nine and a half that it's currently at. Uh, I like the Panthers because so the reasons that I haven't I've been playing. I think I played against the Panthers the last three weeks. Like I played against them in the Tigers game. I played against them in the Seagulls game, played against them in the Roosters game. And that's because Cleary's been out, right? I prefer playing a team in a plus line when they're playing against Cleary because their attacking output is going to be far worse without Cleary, right? In the same same in the same respect, when Cleary's back, I'm going to like playing the Panthers in a negative line more because I think it's more likely that they score more points. Thus it's more likely that they win by a larger margin. So Panthers minus seven and a half in this one. Happy to take the Panthers minus nine and a half as well, but luckily got on early, which I'll shout out the spreadsheet again. Get in the spreadsheet. Even if you think I'm, a, I'm an idiot better, get in the spreadsheet because I get early lines that... Yeah, you do make see. money. Yeah, you wouldn't see if you weren't following the spreadsheet. Um, But yeah, that's my take for the game. Uh, Anything else to add or should we move on to the game right now? Happy to move on, but I don't really want to move on to this game, to be honest. Yeah, Dolphins, Knights. Yeah. Well, I, I don't see well that we don't get flogged. Well, yeah, after the perform, just looking at scores last week, the performance of we were one of the worst performing teams last week, and they were probably one of the best performing teams. Uh, it is worrying as a Knights fan. Uh, yeah. And one to watch this game, and it's what, third versus 15th this game? Um, but let's talk the effects of the players that are in and out. Probably the most important one to talk to is the is the Knights, Caleb Ponga out, David Armstrong in that fullback position. Uh, I know as a Knights fan, you would have watched him a bit. So what's your thoughts on David Armstrong? So he's a little dude. He's by the little I mean he's under six foot and barely so. I believe he's 5'11". Um, yeah. He might maybe even six foot. I'm not too sure. But he's one of those blokes who's like Pappenhausen where he's probably about 80 kilos at most soaking wet. But he is, um, if you saw him in the trials, see him in the cup, he's absolutely electric. The fact he can pull off a lot, he he could be the next big player, but he's the understudy to Caitlin Ponga. So um, he's also the understudy to the uh, normal New South Wales Cup fullback, so he normally plays wing, but he's still a very good fullback. I'm really excited to see how he does, but he's also playing in possibly the worst attacking team in the league at the moment. So... Take that as take that as uh, what as you will. Yeah. So David Armstrong, I'm I'm a big fan of his work from what I've seen of him. I think he's I think he's a good footy player, and I'm similarly uh, excited to see him play. It's priced at 200k, so two weeks time he could be a player that we could look at trading in with Ponger out for that long term injury. But there's a few concerns, right? It's Fletcher Sharp. The yeah. So Fletcher time. Sharp is considered the better player out of the two. Yeah, but uh, fullback position at least. But again, if Armstrong plays well, you'd imagine he would lock down this position. So we just kind of have to wait and see, don't we? 
yeah, yeah, it's a wait and see for sure. Uh, but it's it's an interesting watch for this week. Oh, definitely. Obviously, like we don't really have to talk about the effect of Ponger out. It's obviously going to be a big loss. Daily and play a lot this year. So, yeah, it's going to have an effect on on the team quite obviously there. Yeah, the only thing I'm happy about is the fact it gives people like me who have Ponger in their team that extra week to decide if there's a, if you want to go cheapy, if you're if or if you want to suck like, up. Uh, if you want to pay for a big boy instead. But um, I guess you just have to wait and see, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard to go cheapy unless you're doing something like you're doing where you're using that money straight away for a Cleary. But um, yeah, like it's 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 definitely an option with the amount of cheapies. Probably not a David Armstrong in the fullback position, but maybe his opposition number one in this game, which we can talk to, yep. um, Trey Fuller, was... Incredible last week, really, really, really strong. Probably one of the primary reasons that they won by as many points as they did, or, or the reason they put 40 points on in the second half. Um, what do you think of Trey Fuller as a super, super coach? Well, the thing is, I, I really like the guy, but my, my problem is I don't think he comes back and plays after Hammer comes back in, what, three weeks? Things only after four then, weeks, is that right? But then Hammer possibly could go straight into Origin, so he could play... If Harry plays all three of those origins, you could bring in Trey Fuller. He plays two or three weeks, and then Hammer's in, sure. But you can just sit him in the center wing as not playing, like he's not going to AE. And then you he'll play, hopefully, if Hammer's out. I don't know what – actually, I don't know what rounds they play out of 13, 16, 19, but he could get – no, they play all three. They play all three 13, 16, 19. Okay. So yeah, that's the case. Play... Probably decent shout, but I, I just don't know if I can – really trust him to keep on performing at that level. I'd rather some guy you know isn't going to play Origin. So he isn't going to... Sorry, I just want a guy who I know is going to play round 27. That's what I'm trying to say. Round 27. Well, yeah. Well, at least like a couple more games than Trey Fuller will. I just don't think he's worth... I mean, I just don't know if he's worth it, that's all. Just given I don't think he's going to get enough game time to justify his own existence. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Like, he's going to get enough game time. I mean... Obviously, it depends if Hammer plays Origin, but after last year's performance, you'd have to think he's an absolute shoe in to play. And yeah. even coming back from injury, you'd have to probably pick him. Um, so let's say he plays all three Origins. That means, I've looked it up, the Dolphins do play uh, 13, 16, and 19. So he gets an extra three games there minimum. So three games plus he'll get this week. So that means five games at an absolute minimum. And then he probably plays another couple of weeks while Hammer's out. So he gets six, seven games. He'll get three or four price rises. With three or four price rises, he could easily be 500K and you've made 300K. So you're not worried about him being the type of player that, oh, he's going to be there at the end of the season or whatever. If you're trading him in, it's the type of player that you're trading now and then you're trading to, after round 19, you're trading to one of those guns. It is a massive okay. risk. Yeah. It's a massive risk because he's fullback only. But in your position, if you're thinking about it, it's not the craziest it's play. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Um, let's talk to some of their other players. Jackie Bostock is probably the one we should have touched on first after the side. Yeah, can points. you believe that? We both drop him and he scores, what, 100? Yeah, I mean, even after you said it, I started thinking, like, fuck, like he definitely goes big this round. And he what, went 120 or something. Even yeah, more something than ridiculous. Him. It's something yeah, yeah. that's on the arc. Very, very like, frustrating. You can't um, win the ball, though, can you? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you just got to put that out of your mind, honestly. If you, from if my, from trading, yeah. both our opinions, we thought he was plateauing. So, again, do you think he's going to score big again this year? I, I don't know. But I'm happy to have made 400 or well, 300 grand off him. So I'm not too concerned about him scoring big. Yeah, I mean, like, he could easily go big again this game, considering that. Oh, he like, very much could have a big game this week. So if you have him, I'd say holes. But if you don't, wait too late. Play. I mean, it's yeah, definitely old because he's, he's got a negative break even, but yeah. It's just whether you play him or not, and I would be playing him. I kind of think you have to. I assume everyone else is going to play him after that game. you got to like, you got to think about every other like uh, player, you know? Yeah. Let's talk uh, Jeremy Marshall King. He was very solid on the weekend. Would he be yeah. someone you think of trading in in the hooker position, especially with I, players like the Green and Coruscant probably playing Origin? I consider him, but I think there are other options, namely a uh, certain Brayley who plays with the Sharks. Um, Get off the against... Brayley's dick. <laughs> What'd you say? 
get off Blake Bailey's dick. Like, he's doing well. He's seriously doing well. There's so many better off. Uh, JMK is definitely a better option than Blake Bailey. I, I think Blake Bailey is a decent option. And I, I think Jeremy, Mark, Jeremy Marshall King's kind of a bit too expensive now. Is he, is he not 7 obk? No, he's 628. Okay, he's never mind. He's, quite he's the same class as Blake Bailey. Yeah, actually, I think Blake Bradley might be 660. But yeah, I, I don't mind him at all, but um, hasn't he had a bit of an injury history in the past couple couple seasons? Yeah, a bit, but like you've got to sort of like not think about that as much. Any player at any point can get injured. You've got to, it's not, you can't really be basing trade. Like I didn't get Ponga at all last year because I'm like, oh, he's just going to get concussed again, like the way he was playing. Uh, last yeah. year, I was like, just going to definitely get cussed, and then he went on that. He's actually. likely out for the season now, so probably a good thing you didn't get him this season, is it? Well, I mean, I started with him, but yes, it's it's good that I didn't have him when he went out. But yeah. but I, my point is that you can't just think about injuries when you're trading in players, right? Like okay, in that case, I'm going to bring in Braden. Uh, Jay, I'm going to bring in like Blake Braley's brother this week. The other Braley, Jaden Braley. How's that say? By all means, it's not the worst trade in of all time. I wouldn't be trading him in, but. It's not that he was trading considering he's a sheep, but yeah, uh, actually, please don't do it. Please don't, please don't even consider doing that. He's not playing well, but yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and then probably the other one that's these Dolphins players are burning me, Maxi Platt. Yeah, I can't believe that happened. Yeah, that's just how, how much is he going for now? Is he? Or... He's still not that expensive. He's still got a negative break even. I, I, I still think he's a trade in. I'm just trying to save trade, so I'm not wasting it on. On a maxi plath, but he's 382k and he'll, he's got a negative six break even and he'll have a negative break even again next week because he does have that uh, high score in his role. Actually, I have a really negative break even because um, he has a high, he had a high score last week and then the week before that he had a really low score because he got, um, he got, he did, that was the week he got simmed. So he'll be, he'll make a fair bit of money in the next two rounds. But um, yeah. do you think that his his minutes will be changed at all when Tommy Flegler comes back? Uh Flegler, no. I don't know, well, maybe, but because they've currently got you and you and Aiken playing twelve, and you'd think that Aiken would probably take top minutes off Max Platt once their rotation goes back to normal. Uh yeah, I, I don't think Aiken takes minutes off him, but maybe if Flegler's back, one of these other forwards that's playing less minutes drops out and then Flegler picks up a few more minutes. But I think Maxi Platt's solid enough that I still think he gets 50 minutes, averages 50. Uh, I think he's gonna, he's, I think he's gonna be before the before last week when he got a double. Obviously, uh, he was just averaging like a one ppm and playing like 50 minutes every game. He's pretty reasonably consistent. So, trade him in, expecting a 50 every week, and uh, to make you know 120k, he's not the worst trade of all time. Fair enough. Um. Anything else super go traveling for yourself in this game? Um, yeah, so again, Greg Marzu is definitely a watch for me. He's not doing too well, but I know once the Knights sort their attack out, he's going to be an absolute weapon. Yeah, but does that, does that time ever come, though? I did say that I was going to look to trade him in this week, but on the injury, just... No, I'll no. right, well, see some consistency first. I, I'm with you. I want to get him so bad, but again, if the Knights aren't scoring attacking points, what's the point? But, the, but basically why Greg Marzu is so effective is because Ponga always sweeps down that left yeah, and like, gets yeah. so much more. So that's why he scored so well. A lot of, I mean, obviously he runs out of the back, but like a lot of why he scored well was Ponga's, um, was Ponga's service to him. Oh, uh, definitely. Still. Yeah. Uh, there's other players we can mention, like a Kai Piss Paul, but they're, they're, just, they're just a hold for mine. Yeah, um, no, that's just, really that was really, no. Um... Uh, let's talk bets in this one. Uh, firstly, yourself. Yeah, so I have zero confidence in the Knights. So I'm going uh, for three, three try scorers. I don't want to bet on the Dolphins winning. So I feel like that's borderline blasphemy. Um, so I'm going stock Buller. And, and we've seen a lot of players score tries on debut this year. Have you noticed that? Sorry, you just dropped out for a second, but you said Bollock, Bostock, Fuller, and Armstrong, Sorry. right? Yeah, that's true. I said we've seen a lot of players score on debut, so I'm going with Armstrong to score in his debut as well. Fair enough. Yeah, um, you can that is, get that. Yeah, it's $15, so hopefully we see arms him Armstrong him, Armstronging his way over the sideline, on the, the try lines, not the sidelines, hopefully yeah. on. Hopefully the try line. Um, yeah. 
in this. You did say it's a bit sacrilegious, but in this one for myself, I did go to Dolphins minus five and a half. Let me quickly justify it before I get any hate for betting against my team. I think um, you're betting against your team. I, I, I don't think you can justify this one, to be honest. Yeah, so uh, what I'm actually probably going to do is cash this bet. So I bet on Dolphins minus five and a half early, expecting the line to shift, and it has shifted. Uh, I'll have my bet on the screen of what I actually put on. I only got them at $1.80, but I expected the line to shift even further once the final teams were announced. But um, it's a wait and see for me. If the line shifts another two points, I'll definitely think about cashing this one out. But if it has to play, like it's not, I'm not too upset about it considering the performance of both teams last week. But yeah, it was mostly a play just with the expectation that the line would shift and then I can, you know, to do with it what I want, whether I cash it out or um, or, or continue to play it. I'm sort Fair of enough. okay with it either way. Um, let's talk the last game of the round, the Raiders versus the Sharks. Uh, in this one, a lot of carnage in both teams, so heaps of players to sort of touch on. Uh, super uh, so biggest point, though, did you see what happened to uh, Braden Trindle today? Yeah, so, well, well, is it something to do with, like... Fail a code test or something? No, so it's worse than that. So after the game on Sunday, uh, after absolutely dominating the cows, he decides to go out and party, yep. um, has a couple of drinks, uh, has a couple of lines, then drives home. Nice. So he gets caught, DUI, mid-range, testing positive for coke on the sidelines with an ex- with a a license that he has been suspended. Yeah. So nice. he's, he's done the triple negatives there. Like, that's That's really bad. Yeah. Um, there's some rumors suggesting that given how bad it is, he may get sacked um, just because yeah. of the fact that he was driving on a suspended license to begin with. It's it's a terrible look for him. Yeah. Um, I doubt he comes back this season, to be honest. So if you have the Trindles, you get rid of him right away. Yeah, I don't know why anyone would still have him, but yeah, it definitely increases Nico Hines stocks. Let's just run through because there's a big list of players that we sort of need to touch on. Here, let's run through especially the entirety of the Raiders backs, yeah, exactly. So, let's run through firstly. Chevy Stewart had a low score on the weekend. Uh, In my opinion, he's a he's a watch and see because he does does have that low score. You don't need to trade him in, he's only averaging about his uh break about his like he'll just break even this week, even though he's 200k. So, don't worry about trading him in this week, but maybe in a couple of weeks, you can think about trading him in. Definitely to add on Chevy Stewart. Uh, no, he's definitely just a wait and see. Um, only other thing to really take note of is Albert Hopperwate was named at 18. Yeah. Um, so if he comes back in the team, that could cause a very big backline shift. Um, so Stuart may drop out of this team, depending on if they want to move someone back, maybe Sebastian yeah. Chris. Um, can play as well, to be fair. Sorry, Hopperwate can as well, yeah. Um, then there's also, when's Rappiner back? And I don't know, and also Savage can play fullback as well. So there's heaps yeah, of options on at the fullback position there for them. Yeah, definitely. So I, I don't know if you'll get in. I don't even know how many games you'll get, to be honest, but it's yeah. definitely a wait and see. I, I don't pick him up. Definitely don't pick him up right away. Yeah, yeah. Big implications either way all around. Uh, James Schiller was the next one down that was sort of relevant. You're yeah, so... Hold, so... I, I'm going to play him this week. Um, I think he's a better option than the other player. No, I'm not surprised I've actually mentioned him there, but... Um, I think he's better than the other winger. That is the big boy, Xavier Savage. I think they're attacking more on the right, so I think he's a play this week if you have him. Um, there's still a little bit of growth, so if you really want to get him, get him. But I don't know how long he's going to play, just given how volatile potentially this Canberra Raiders back line could be. Um, if I was to suggest somebody drops out of that team, I would say it's probably Schiller on the basis that he is signed to Newcastle next year. A few things to unpack in what you just said. So Schiller, I wouldn't really be looking at playing, but I'll speak to my best bet uh, later as to why I wouldn't play him. It's basically I'm on the Sharks to put it to be, um, yeah, to be to be blunt. Um, Schiller, yeah, wouldn't be playing. You mentioned you wouldn't, like I wouldn't even ever think. You said you could bring him in. I would never buy him this week. It's just whether you hold or sell. He's highly sold this week. Uh, I don't think you need to sell. He's break even still around 43. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of people have a very short attention span given he scored 80, like 80 something the week before that 30 this like last week. So, yeah. But I think it's more that I think it's less with this one, less that it's a short attention span, more that I think those early like hundreds and stuff were, were the outliers. 
and beats yeah. us. Like, I, I could easily score, I, I, don't get me wrong, you could easily score like 70 this week, and I wouldn't be shocked, but um, I'm not completely knocking anyone trying to trade him out, but I'm just holding him because I'm not super interested in making trades this this round. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then in terms of you saying he's going to drop out, I, I don't think he's a chance, well, much of a chance to drop out. I think Chevy Stewart would be the first one to drop out if they were going to drop someone. But uh, I think in all likelihood they keep this team because Chevy Stewart still had a crack, even though he didn't have a good game, still had a crack last, last game. So I think they sort of stick with the current team as it is. I just also mean when both Rafinay and Hopawati come back. So I assume that Chevy Stewart's gone um, just yeah. because of how young he is. He didn't. He's probably not quite ready for first grade yet. But um, he's there for now. And I think once Opa White and Rafner get out, I think Schiller will be the one to move. I could easily see Schiller staying and Opa White playing the set. Look, Schiller's definitely a possibility, but I don't think he's... The way he's playing, I don't think he's anywhere near the first one on the chopping block uh, in this team. Yeah, I'm just saying it from a loyalty standpoint. It's very bizarre, though, that basically the entirety of the Raiders 1-5 to five can play anywhere in the 1-5. to five. Yeah. It's very it's very great to see that. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Uh, let's jump out of the one to five, though. I'd like Savage, I'd, there's a similar position. I don't mind trading that if you still have him, but I don't have it. Um, yeah. Let's jump out of the one to five. Let's jump into the sixes and sevens. Ethan Strange had a poor super coach game last week, but I'm still super keen on holding and maybe even thinking about playing him this week. I don't think I will play him just because I like the Sharks, but I. Can't really knock anyone that's thinking about playing him in this week. And once they start to get some decent fixtures again, Strange will get back to scoring decent scores. He might be negatively affected by Fogarty being out, but... Don't yeah, mind. if he's negatively affected, I think the whole team will. So probably just wait and see yep. um, with that one, to be honest. Yep, another one that you can easily uh, hold and wait and see for this round. It'll be a very close watch in this game to see how they actually go without Fogarty. Um, but... Yeah, like you can think about trading players out next week, but I'm not super keen on trading yeah. players players this week. Uh, if we're talking about trading players in though, their their seven for this week is Kyo Weeks. Uh, he'll be at a very uh, low price in two weeks' time when he starts to uh, get a positive. Sorry, get a he'll have a very negative break in when he starts to make money. Um, would he be someone you think about trading in in two weeks' time? Uh, well, not in two weeks' time because the Raiders have a buy in round ten, I believe. So in three weeks' time. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not thinking about buyers. I'm more just thinking about two weeks. Like, yeah, no, I get what you mean. Sorry, yeah. 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 So, sorry, yeah. I did mean to sound rude there. Very handsome. No, 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 sorry, no, I, I know it. You're, you're good, but I just yeah. Oh uh, yeah, so definitely I consider him, but again, I want to see at this stage is Fogarty being ruled out for the season. Is that right? Uh, Fogarty, I'm not sure it's the season, but it's a long enough time that you should consider weeks, basically. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I agree with you. It just depends if I have the space for him. To be honest, is he yeah. is weeks a dual uh, dual center wing slash six? I think he's just a six. To be honest, I'll double check. Yeah. If oh, he was a dual center wing, I'd be jumping all over. Ooh, yeah, yeah so I'd, be, I'd be looking at him for the five eighth position. Depending on how other players are going, he could be if you want to go down from like a Galvin or a. Probably not a Galvin. I'm sort of interested in holding Galvin for pretty much the whole yeah. season at this point in time. That's my thinking. But um, a Tamara Martin maybe in a couple of weeks when he sort of maxes out in price. Weeks could be yeah. a... Weeks could be a decent value there. Something. Like That is something I'm considering myself with Tamara Martin. Yeah. Um, again, there's no guarantee... Who is it? Metcalf? The 5-8. Yeah, yeah, there's no guarantee when he comes back. If he comes back randomly, I'm jumping straight on Kyo Weeks from Tamari Martin. Yeah. Um, but then again, I am trying to exit as many Canberra Raiders players as I can, just because, like I said earlier, round 10 is a Canberra Raiders buy, and yeah. I essentially have the entire Raiders back line of my team. Yeah. So I just need to get as rid, of, as rid of as many of the players as possible and to work out who I'm holding, and then from there kind of move on. But what can you do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you're in a similar position, then you could definitely think about trading out all of those plays, Strange, Schiller, and um, and Savage. and Savage. But I'd rather trade out the wingers and stuff first because Strange has looked really good. Um, uh, I think Strange is definitely a hold for now. He's he's killing it, and he also has that dual uh, dual position ability, so he can kind of shift them around to move stuff. So yeah, yeah, he's definitely a hold for me. Yeah, uh, I agree wholeheartedly. Um. 
Another one in that team is Simi Sasagi playing in back row, starting in the back row. I think he's just what available at the centre, though, in the game, in the Supercoach. Yeah. Just available at centre at 219k. I think he's reasonably high on, uh, yeah, fifth highest traded in player this round. Would he be someone that you look at? I think he's played. Uh, is he starting? I haven't had a chance to look at yeah. that Raiders team. Yeah, he's starting in the back row. Okay. Who, who's Hosking. missing then? So they're missing Hosking. Um, is Pasani and, Solo? Um, and no, what's his name? Pasani Solo plays front 17. Row. Yeah. Um, Whitehead is also out. So. No, true. Yeah. So from my understanding, Hosking's out for a decent period. He's, he's done, is it, was it an arm or elbow injury? He's out for a period. I'm not sure exactly how long. Let me look this up. But Simi, while I'm looking this up, Simi Sasagi would it be someone you you'd consider? I uh, yeah, I need to move some uh, space around. But again, only at center wing. If he get if he gets upright into the dual position to second row, I'd be jumping all over him. But at uh, just at center wing, I can't justify it. Yeah, but he could easily get that dual position in a few weeks, and you if he's if he's not getting it right. But you could get him in thinking that he is going to get it eventually. And you could trade him in for those players like your like your Schiller, like your Strange, like your Savage, if you have any of them. And then you're not putting yourself in a worse position in terms of Raiders players. Uh, and you've got him there. The only thing is Elliot Whitehead back round nine. So next round looks like he'll be back uh, in, in yeah. all likelihood. And so Zach Hosking's Injury is indefinite. So, yeah, for mine, not really, definitely not a priority trade in, and maybe not even a trade in at all, considering why. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you there. Like, if he was guaranteed minutes, he, he might not even play off the bench either once uh, Whitehead and Hosking come back, yep. which again, I'm not really sure what to do about that. But, oh, also, your Hudson, no, it's Hudson, your Hudson youngster there, sorry. Well, I think you're big red. That's another big out for them as well. So that's round eleven. Big red Sorry, round eleven. He's back apparently. Okay, yeah. So I'm not sure how many minutes Sasungi's going to get long term, but yeah. um, yeah, it's probably a wait and see at best. To be honest, it's more now, a, I it's more about... that affects um, Sasungi uh, and obviously Hosking, but Hosking's injury is probably longer. But um. Yeah, but just keep in mind that Sticky doesn't really tend to see forwards as being anything other than forwards. He doesn't break them down a lot. You'll see you'll see basically all of their forwards players play anywhere between eight and thirteen. Really. I don't think Joey Tarpany's playing in the back row, man. But... Yeah. Or or Papa Lee. I like mean they, have, they, have, they do have props and they have a few players that can play both. Like your white heads could play either. Um a horse rep could play either. Horsburgh's um, played like every position between eight and thirteen since he moved to Canberra. He's had Hudson Young has he's played, he's played well, thirteen so. before. What? I was taking a piece. He hasn't played football, but every other position. But, yeah, true. Actually, forgot that. Actually, I would pay money to see him play hooker. That'd be so funny. Yeah. Yeah, but um, like, you get what I mean. Like from my understanding, Sticky doesn't really like to call his forwards board uh, anything other than forwards. Yeah, like it definitely. Either way, Simi Sasagi going to the Sharks team as a trade um, Let's talk the Sharks players. There's a few exciting, exciting players in the Sharkies team. Kale Eero, uh, mm. you needed him for a try last week. He didn't get over, but he did. Still scored 52, I believe, which is pretty awesome for his center. Yeah. Uh, he did have a very solid super coach score. And probably a player that you'd be looking at playing almost every week, in my opinion. Yeah, um, he's starting for me this week just because... He's playing the Raiders, and yeah. I think he's he's up for a big one, yeah. Yeah, a week of Raiders out, but I'm playing him as well. Um, not really much more to say than that. Like, I, I honestly think he could be a player every week with that base. So um, absolutely cheering with his output on the weekend, even though he didn't unfortunately get a try. Uh, another, like a Ronaldo Militaro is the highest scoring, highest averaging player in the game at the moment. Yeah, so the one thing I'm kind of worried about is picking two players from the same edge from the same team. Yeah. I've already got I've already got R five, but do you think he's just scoring so much it's kind of an exception to the rule? Uh, I think for mine, Ronaldo is one of those four four center wings that you want at the end of the year that you're playing sort of every week. Uh, but he doesn't have to be the player that you get right now. If you have yeah. him, you're cheering. If you don't, he's 800k. Like, don't need him. Yeah, understandable. But you know. 
if you're trying to build your team to target those players eventually, not a not a bad trading option. No, As for their halves, Atkinson and Hines. I'll let you take this away because uh, you're trading in Hines this week. Yeah, so what we've seen so far this year is that uh, a certain naughty boy has been taking a lot of the attacking force off of a certain Nico Hines. Um, so, so funny. I saw you Google it. A certain naughty boy. What? If, the, if, if he's being still dead, I'm not going to refer to him by his real name, am I? Sure. Anyway, yeah, so he's been attacking a bit more than Nico Hines has. So I'm just really excited to... I, I assume that Atkinson's... Is it Atkinson playing? Yep. Yeah, so Daniel Atkinson, yeah. I'm just kind of thinking that Atkinson just sits back and lets uh, Nico run the show. I think for the next couple, I think for the, until the end of the season, we see the Nico Hines show again. And I think Nico Hines is going to go back to his pretty good form, um, to say the least. So I'm going, I'm going to captain Nico Hines this week. I'm bringing him in solely to see how well he does. Yeah, would probably have to tend to agree with you there with Nico sort of being the more, hope will probably will revert to being the more dominant half again, even though Koza was still the more dominant half. It's just even more dominant now with Atkinson at six. I haven't really seen much of him play. So I don't yeah, know maybe. how he goes uh, at the six. But, you know, you'd have to think Nico probably takes control. So can't knock anyone training me. And probably the, the two halves you want at the moment are Nico and Cleary. That's not anything. Yeah, that's, that's my end goal as well. So yeah. hopefully yeah. we can get it as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, so a little bit annoying that I currently have SJ, especially with that niggling injury, but you know, what can you do? Yeah. Um, so can't really knock anyone trading in Nico this week. Uh, we could talk their back rollers, Nico and Wilton, probably both not bad trade-ins. I think Nico has hit a pretty good price now. He was someone that I said I was monitoring uh, for Upcoming fixtures at 584k. Would he be someone that you consider at that price? At 584k, I'd, I'd love that to be honest. Um, their other half, Wilton, who's sorry, not their other half, their other second row, Wilton, I believe it's like 100, 150k more. And they last season they tended to prefer the right edge over the left edge. So I'm keen to see if he scores more with Nico Hines dominating more of it. Um, I think for me, it's a wait and see. If they're attacking down that right side more, then I will be definitely jumping on a T on a uh, not a. I will be jumping on a Nicara. There we yeah. go. Definitely a watch. I may think about him next week. I may even think about him this week if I change my mind and decide to make a trade. But um, yeah, yeah, Nicara actually could end up being a, a trade that I make. Uh, is there anything else to add, super coach wise, or should we jump into the bets? Uh, definitely jump into the bets. But first, did you notice that Tommy Hazelton got a 69 and played 25 minutes? I'm going to get a try. Yeah. Good for you. Pretty, pretty mental still. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to say. It's about Tommy Hazelton. He keeps coming good for you and it's fucking annoying. But, um, uh, it's yeah. actually so funny. Like, I'm going to sell him eventually, but I can't justify it because it's so funny just to see him like get these random ass scores out of nowhere. When well, his break even would have to be good after that after that score. Yeah. So, yeah, but he's probably not going to play in more than twenty minutes at a time. Uh, yeah, his break even is thirty six, so should still make money on him. Um, yeah, it's good. but no, let's let's talk bets. Uh, for myself, I've got the Sharks minus five point five points on bet three six five early. I got that. I got on that, and the line uh, just before, like just. Recently, sorry, I got on that just before the final game of the round last round, and then the line eventually went out to I think nine and a half. So it shifted wow. two ranges, if that makes sense, because normally it goes five and a half, and then seven and a half, and then nine and a half. So it shifted twice. Um, but I think it's come back now since uh, since the news of um, of Trendle being out. Uh, but I still the five and a half. I'm pretty pretty happy about considering Fogey out for the Raiders, but I can definitely see some bounce back with the Raiders. So wary on how to play this one, especially in Canberra. But... I, I think the Sharks will be a bit of a better team, but I think the Raiders will put up some fight. So I think it's going to be a decently high scoring game. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to go for a pretty, pretty basic Sharks. Um, Ronaldo to score. He's in an awesome form and Schiller anytime try scorer at 550. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, 
don't know, Sharks minus five and a half, but like I sort of already mentioned, I'm not not super keen on playing them anything part and a line past that really. Five and a half versus six and a half may not seem that much, but it's a converted try versus exactly it's a converted try and a field goal versus converted try. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's sort of everything for this game. Uh, I mean, yeah, basically my thinking for this game is Fogey is a massive out for them, and that's why I'm playing the Sharks. But uh, anything else you can add at all from this game or anything from this round? Not really, to be honest. Um, I think we're good to go. I think we have the two best bets. Did we mention that Walsh over or under? Are we saying over or under? So if 70 hits, does Mark, do I win or do you win? 70 is Boyd. 70, okay, 70 is Boyd. Over or under 70. And um, and then also we had a side bet on the line in the Warriors Titans game. Let me just double check that right now as we speak. Um, I'll just check on sports bet to be fair. Uh, someone, do you see someone commented on the last video saying it's the heart sponsored by sports bet? Because you put all you know why I do sports. that. Uh, it's because they give you so many bonus bets because I'm such a shit bet. <laughs> yeah, currently 12 and a half is the line. Okay. So, are you happy to take a 12 and a half? More than happy to take 12 and a half there. Yeah, okay. So, we'll have we have all these bets. Every I don't know if everyone sees it, but we have all these bets in the comments and we'll have the, all the side bets in the comments as well. Um, so Give us your opinion again. Give us your take on what the forfeit should be for the side bet. Probably do another three or four rounds, do you reckon, in, of side I'd bets? I'd say definitely go to, should we go to round 10, make it easier? And then from there, we'll go round 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20, uh, 20 25 then. So, so we're going to do 8, 9, 10, and then we'll go, so after round 10? Or... Yeah, we'll go, yeah, we'll do that. Cool, cool. And then 11 will be magic round, so that'll be, that'll be fun. Um, so yeah, for rounds eight, nine, ten, give us a chuck something in the comments what the fourth which should be. Um, uh, anything else to add, heart related? No homo stuff, please. Not that we're not bad, but we just don't want to kiss each other. Yeah. Um, so I've been the head, been joined by the heart, and yeah, I think that's everything for today. Um, drop a comment, give us a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, but we'll go fuck ourselves.